Hello, in this video I'd like to take a look at armatures, specifically the various ways we can get the bones working to move and deform our objects. I'll briefly go over what bones are and the real basics of them, though the real focus here is to control uh, the deformation and movement effectively using the tools available. Let's click anywhere to get rid of the splash screen. We'll just take a quick look at a armature here. So X and delete the default cube. I'll go Shift A and add armature single bone. Now armatures um, in Blender have three different modes that they can be in. You can select them down on the header here. We've got object mode, edit mode and pose mode. So edit mode is where you add uh, bones to the armature and pose mode is where you would be uh, moving the bones to con to make your objects move and uh, deform basically. We can go to edit mode by pressing tab and we can see that the bone is actually made up of three distinct areas. We have the, the tail at the top which is selected at the moment, the body and uh, and, and the head. If we go over to the bone properties over on the right hand side, we can see the relations here. And if we press E to extrude with the tail selected, we can extrude out a new bone. And this becomes then the uh, child of the bone that we extruded out of. <coughs> you can see also this connected option here, which keeps the bones um, connected. And if you were to uh, move the 3D cursor, say, over here, and go Shift A to add a new bone to this armature, this bo bone then isn't parented or connected to uh, to anything. If you wanted to, you could Control P and parent it with the connected or keep offset option. option. So keep op offset would keep it where it is uh, at the moment. And if we were to press the connected, um, it would snap to uh, to the bone like that. Control tab will get you into uh, pose mode and this is where you can uh, start moving your bones around and if they were attached to objects that's when uh, stuff would start to happen. And to reset the pose I'll go uh, Alt G R and S to uh, clear the location, rotation and scale of the, uh, of the bones. There are loads of really cool uh, rigging tutorials uh, out there, so that's all I really want to cover right now. Um, we'll get on and uh, have a look at the, the three different ways um, that we can use bones to move our objects about. So I'm just going to go uh, X and delete that and Shift C and recenter my 3D cursor. And over on layer 2, I've got uh, three uh, cubes here. And the the first way I'm going to demonstrate is just by literally parenting objects to bones um, and then moving the bones in pose mode um, to get them moving around. So front view with number pad 1 and uh, number pad 5 for orthographic vo uh, mode. Shift A and we're going to add our single bone again. You notice it's uh, inside the object at the moment. You can, If we go into wireframe with Z you can see it in there. <coughs> we can go to the uh, armature properties uh, buttons here turn on x-ray and then we can see our object uh, through the uh, see our armature through the object there so tab into edit mode this is where you don't want to be um, duplicating this in object mode you don't want to be making new armatures you want to be adding bones to the armature so I'm going to go shift D and duplicate this uh, bone uh, hold uh, press Z to constrain to the Z axis and uh, hold control to snap to the grid units and uh, just uh, snap a couple of bones up like that Control tab into pose mode you can see that these guys aren't parented to each other so we just need to uh, to parent those so select the top bone first of all shift select that and control P and keep the offset and we'll do the same thing here control P keep the offset and then you can see in pose mode how these guys are, uh, are moving around like that. Um, so to parent these uh, cubes to the armature, we need the armature to be in pose mode as it is. We can select the object and then shift select the bone we want to parent to and go control P and choose set parent to bone. And we can do that now for uh, each of these guys. There we go. And now you'll see that when we move our bones in pose mode, how the objects are moving along with them. And this would be great for uh, mechanical pieces of machinery or something like that that you don't need to bend or deform um, just to have them parented with the with the bones um, just like that. 
So I'm going to go into object mode and again just uh, delete all these. I've got another example over on layer 3, which is just basically a cube that I've scaled down along everything except the z-axis and added a number of uh, loop cuts to. <coughs> Now this will give us some uh, a good example of how we can get this guy sort of uh, bending. So uh, again, we'll go into front view and uh, shift A and add our armature single bone. And we'll choose X-ray once again. And uh, this time I'm going to um, grab the tail here and just grab it up to the top of the object. And select the body and press W and choose to subdivide. I want, um, <clears throat> I want uh, four bones here. It's good practice to get into naming these guys, so I'm going to go and find in the end properties panel the uh, the under the names here. I'm just going to call this uh, bone one, say, and call this one uh, bone two and three and bone four. It might seem a little bit silly just right now, but when you get into more complex rigs, um, having names for your bones is uh, is pretty important so there are the, the two more ways that we can control this basically um, the main way is with an armature modifier on the object so I'm going to go ahead and select the cube and uh, into the modifiers buttons here and add our armature modifier and the two ways we can get this moving are to bind to the vertex groups or the bone envelopes so I'm going to demonstrate bone envelopes first of all, so I uncheck vertex groups and in the object field we're going to choose our armature as the, uh, as the object. <clears throat> so with the bone envelopes selected what we'll find is that when we go into pose mode and start bending our, uh, moving our bones around, the, the object is indeed deforming and, and bending. If we need to visualize why this is happening we can go to the object data buttons here, the, um, the armature buttons. If we choose the, to display type, uh, we change to envelope here, you can actually see that this is the envelope of the bone, and this is kind of like uh, the sort of sphere of influence, I guess you might call it, um, that the bone is having on the mesh. We'll go to the um, bone buttons here, and in the deform panel, you can find the uh, envelope here for adjusting the, 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 the distance of the sort of influence area. And you can set up some sort of nice uh, basic uh, kind of deformation uh, like that if you so desired. But where the real magic happens is when we start to use vertex groups. So I'm just going to clear all those out. I'm going to reset the uh, display back to our default uh, one here. Select our cube again and in the armature modifier turn off uh, bone envelopes and change to vertex groups. Now the vertex groups panel can be found in the object data buttons here. And vertex groups are basically groups of vertices which can be given certain weights to decide how much effect a modifier or whatever should apply to them. So in the case of the armature modifier, um, vertex groups with the same name as the bone um, is affected are affected by that bone. If that makes any sense. Um, <laughs> I'll try and explain it um, just here now. If we have um, the armature in pose mode, we can select our object here and control tab into weight painting mode. And here we can also select our bones and what you'll find is that if we were to paint some weight uh, across the, the, the top of this guy here, then in fact it creates a vertex group um, for this bone with the same name as the bone and the vertex vertices are then deformed by this bone um, based on the amount of weight um, applied. So we can uh, maybe select this, this bone down here and again we'll start painting. We can see that the vertex groups appears. There's another way to apply the weights. Um, uh, here we can select a bone, go to the weights menu here and choose assign automatic from bones or assign from bone envelopes. So we know what the bone envelopes are, that would base the weight applied to the mesh on the envelope of the bone. If we go assign automatic from bones, then Blender tries to make a sort of reasonably good guess at, at what you want. And indeed you could select all the bones with A, go to the weights and uh, choose assign automatic from bones. And this sets up uh, usually a pretty good um, kind of deformation here. Now there is a, a, there's a really quick way to, to achieve this. If I just press the little down arrow here and delete all the vertex groups and select our object um, in object mode, and I'll just go and remove the uh, armature modifier. 
we can actually parent the uh, object to the armature like before so uh, shift uh, select the object shift select the armature control p and you probably saw these these guys before these options um, with empty groups would uh, set up all the vertex groups for the bones without any weights uh, envelope weights we know what they are and automatic weights now we know what they are as well so we could choose with automatic weights and you can see that that sets up the um, uh, the, the weights as we uh, as we had a look at them um, just before so how can we control these um, a little bit more eff effectively well we can go to the uh, vertex groups panel once again and whilst uh, you can select the bones and that selects the correct vertex group over on the right hand side what that means is if you go into edit mode you already have the vertex group selected and you could for example um, say box select all these guys down at the bottom and we, if we wanted to assign them say a weight of you know 0.5 or something like that would be a sort of greeny color we can then click the assign button and we can see how that uh, that, that works there and if you had a set of vertices that you definitely didn't want to be effect, uh, affected by this uh, by this vertex group and you could uh, choose them up here and choose to simply remove them from the vertex group so that would work for your mechanical objects as well where you didn't want them to be bent around uh, and stuff like that and there's a final third way to do this and it's a little bit fiddly but I'll try and demonstrate it as best I can go to the um, armature modifier again and there's two buttons here that we can use to see what's happening whilst we're in edit mode so I'm just going to choose both of those and here we can see if I select say um, this ring of ver uh, this sort of edge loop round here with alt right click um, one of these vertices becomes the active vertex and it's, uh, it's kind of got a white color to it if you wanted to uh, choose your active vertex you can just uh, select and uh, deselect and select it again the last vertex selected becomes the active vertex and in this vertex groups uh, panel um, panel in the sidebar here we can actually control the weights um, of this uh, vertex directly just by moving these sliders around so if you wanted to um, <clears throat> control it and, uh, and sort of have it more over here, let's say, just for example, um, ideally the weights should all add up to one in the vertex group. So we can press the normalize uh, button here to keep the vertex where it is and reset the, ver um, the weights so they all add up to one. And the copy button will then copy the weights to all the other selected vertices. So all the other vertices that we also have selected, we can press copy. And this way we could, um, you know, start, uh, you know, sliding this around and kind of just getting it kind of like where we want. We press normalize and copy and we could go through the armature and just uh, kind of use those or, um, you know, or even just use them for visualizing which uh, vertex groups a particular vertex uh, belongs to. So those are the three ways um, that we can use our bones to move stuff about. Uh, I hope it's <laughs> I hope this video has been informative, not too confusing, and helps you get things working how you like. Uh, so that's all for now. Happy blending.